When naming a carboxylic acid, your first job is to find the longest carbon chain that contains the carbon of the carboxylic acid group. In this first example, the longest carbon chain that contains the, well, there's only one carbon chain, the longest carbon chain that contains the carbon of the carboxylic acid group is right here. We are going to number that carbon chain, starting with the carbon of the carboxylic acid group, that's always going to be carbon number one, and then we continue down the chain. As far as the rest of the naming goes, it's just standard IUPAC naming. So we'll begin by naming any substituents in alphabetical order. And then like in this case, uh, we don't have any substituents, but we do have a double bond present, the double bond, which is starting on carbon number two, going to carbon number three. So this is gonna be a two butene. For carboxylic acids, um, the suffix for a carboxylic acid is that we drop the E off the end of the name and we replace it with oic acid. And acid is a separate word, so 2-butenoic acid. And because this is an alkene, and this particular alkene has the trans stereochemistry or E stereochemistry, we do want to include that as a prefix just to make sure that we are communicating the shape of that carbon-carbon double bond. Let's take a look at a second example, this molecule over here. Start with the carboxylic acid carbon and then number down your longest carbon chain. This is a five carbon chain. Let's begin by naming our substituents. We have a methyl on carbon number three and a bromine on carbon number four. We wanna put those in alphabetical order. That means that the bromo comes first, four bromo, three methyl. This is a five carbon chain, no double bond. So this is a pentane. And remember we drop the E and replace the E with oic acid. Acid is a separate word. For a molecule that has two carboxylic acid groups, these are um, dicarboxylic acids, we want to number from one carboxylic acid group to the other, either left to right or right to left. This one is a symmetrical molecule, so it doesn't really matter if we go left to right or right to left. When we have a dicarboxylic acid, we're always going from one carboxylic acid group to the other. So in this case, we don't need to indicate you know, any, anything about the position of the functional groups. We know that the um, carboxylic acid groups are going to be at the beginning and at the ending of the chain. To name this, we name the carbon chain propane in this case. Now in this situation, we do not drop the E. We leave the E, propane, and then we say dioic acid, acid being a separate word. So this is pretty standard. Every time we have two functional groups, like we've seen this with a diol, this is the one situation where we don't drop the E off the ending of the name. So this is propane dioic acid. And again, we don't have to say that the dioic acid is on carbons one and three because by, by default, by rule, they will always be at the beginning and the ending of the chain. Here's another example of a dioic acid. So for this, for numbering, we always want to number from one carboxylic acid group to the other. If there's a substituent present, we want to number in, in the way that's going to give that substituent the smallest possible number. So this is going to be numbered from right to left, one, two, three, four, five, six. Locate that substituent. It's on carbon number two, and it's a methyl group. Then say the name of the carbon chain. It's a hexane. Don't drop the E, dioic acid. The last type of molecule that we're gonna look at is a cyclic molecule that has a carboxylic acid group hanging off the ring. Carboxylic acid groups can never be actually in the ring because that would just put too many bonds to a carbon. Look at that sad carbon with five bonds. So carboxylic acid groups at best are gonna be directly attached to a ring. To name these molecules, we begin by pretending that the carboxylic acid group isn't there at all, and we just name what we see. That's a cyclopentane, cyclopentane, and then in a second word, we, or second, two more words, I guess, we say carboxylic acid. So this molecule's name is three words, cyclopentane, carboxylic acid. Let's try one more time. So over here, we're gonna begin by pretending like that carboxylic acid group isn't there. That is a chlorocyclohexane. As far as numbering goes, the carbon number one is always gonna be the carbon that has the carboxylic acid group, even though we're you know, pretending like it's not there for, for the naming purposes. And then we wanna number around the ring to give our substituent the smallest possible number. So this is a three chloro, three chloro. Remember, we're gonna pretend like that's not there. 3-chlorocyclohexane, uh, why am I saying 3? 2-chlorocyclohexane, carboxylic acid.